Hi everybody, welcome back to part three of our 132 scale tornado build. This is the Italeri kit. Last time I managed to get the uh, front section of the fuselage together, as you can see, uh, together with the nose undercarriage leg. So that's all sealed in now. And this time I want to concentrate on the main gear and the lower part of the fuselage. And that's just to check when all that's done that the aircraft was going to sit in at least a level position and preferably slightly nose down. That's the characteristic sit of a tornado. So uh, what I want to avoid at all costs is for the aircraft to be slightly nose up. So uh, I'm going to be using the 3D shoe expert main legs. But first of all, I need to cut the uh, gear bay parts out from the Italeri plastic and just dry fit them together, see what we've got to do maybe to add some more detail to them. Probably just tape these parts together because I want to check the fit of the resin undercarriage set and to work out if I need any of the Italeri plastic to get the undercarriage legs to sit properly. So this is one of the legs from the 3D Shoe Expert set. So let's just take a look, see how this locates into the bay. I'll just clear all the casting columns off. To be very careful here because all the brake and hydraulic lines are moulded in and don't want to break those off. So just gradually eat away at the columns. Just try to release the part very gently. The little supports here underneath the brake lines, I'm going to leave those in place until just before I prime and paint the leg. It just gives it a bit of extra support whilst I'm test fitting the leg. So let's just try the leg into the bay. So this one piece casting replaces three or four different plastic Italeri parts. And actually the fit is pretty good. It drops in fairly accurately. We're going to have to do a little bit of adjustment, I think, on it. But overall, that should be quite a time saver. And it's obviously a lot more detailed than the Italeri plastic mouldings as well.
So just a little bit of adjustment here on this front uh, mounting and it sits a little bit better into the Tulare plastic. Now because the geometry of the leg is so key I think what I'm going to do here is assemble the leg into this section of the bay and then assemble everything else around it and hopefully that will mean that when the aircraft sitting on its three legs will get the correct stance of the uh, aeroplane. That's the theory anyway. So I'm just going to take a look to see what extra detail is required for these bays. So just uh, bearing in mind that they're actually fairly well hidden all the detail at the back here you can see from the side actually but the actual roof of the bay is a little bit more concealed so it's just a balance about how much to add that's not going to be a waste of effort just removing the itelaria molded cable detail from this bay roof and I'll replace that shortly with some wire. Just think it looks better in this scale. This is 0.4 millimeter lead wire, which I'll use to reinstate those cables. Let's get the uh, undercarriage legs into the bays. I've checked the fit two or three times and it's pretty good. So time to commit to some CA. Just worth checking that this bulkhead, which slots in here, 
will go in properly because it has to uh, lock in the undercarriage leg at this point. So uh, that's all right, that's going to go in okay. But uh, I'm not going to glue them in at the moment because that will just obstruct the painting and weathering. So with those nice and firm, I'm going to give all the parts a primer coat in black. Then I'll use some of my special mix for the undercarriage base. It's a very, very light grey. It looks almost white, but it's not quite. Uh, just apply that over the top and start to introduce a little bit of shading into the detail. Before I use this lower fuselage plate, I just want to lessen the panel line detail on it. I covered this in part two of the build. I've done all this with the forward fuselage. So if you want to see the result of that, you can take a look back at that video. I think it's worth doing, although it's a bit time consuming. So I'll carry on with this. Get it all cleaned up, then we can take a look at how we're going to get the undercarriage bays installed. Okay, so I've applied the uh, undercoat, the black, and then just misted on some of the very pale grey that I'm using on the undercarriage components. And we've got a little bit of shading going on already. But I just want to accentuate that with a wash. I'm going to be using some Tamiya panel line accent colour. This is the dark brown to start with. And then I'll also use some of this AK landing gear wash as well. Just until we get the sort of effect that we're after. And at the end of that, we should end up with something looking a bit more like this. Okay, so I'll let that dry and then we'll tidy it up with a cotton bud. And then I'll come back with the AK landing gear wash just to dirty it up a little bit more. Whilst I'm waiting for the wash to dry, I've already done the uh, bay bulkhead part. So I'm going to do the detail painting on these using some Citadel colour. This goes on really smoothly with a paintbrush and I'll be overcoating these with some satin varnish so that'll just level everything up. But generally these go on without any brush marks at all if you're careful with them and thin them correctly. So I'll just thin them with some water. And you just need to experiment for yourself if you're using them till you get the correct consistency but you're looking for something that goes on nice and smoothly but also covers well and this as paint as I said it's pretty opaque it's got plenty of pigment in it and it overcoats really well so you can just get a base on as I'm doing here and then go over it again to uh, improve the density if you need to
just cleaning up these bays a little bit now where I've done the wash let's get rid of the excess and I'm using these which are actually Tamiya uh, cotton buds and although they're a lot more expensive than the sort of commercially available ones from the chemist or whatever you can see that they're much finer and you can get into the detail a lot better with them the harder as well so the more durable you can still use these but they're just uh, not as easy to get into the uh, detail as the Tamiya ones are so I use a combination of both the Tamiya wash should just come off after this has been on for about an hour and it's usually fairly easy to get off if you can't just use some uh, enamel thinners just dip the uh, cotton bud into some enamel thinners and let it wick off you don't want it wet so just dampened and you should find that that will get rid of anything that's a bit more stubborn and won't come off this is coming off as I want it really on these legs there's so much detail that you do need something a little bit more refined to get in to clean them you have to be careful cleaning up these legs because the detail on them so fine the brake wires here at the bottom are very delicate so they'll easily break if you catch them with the cotton bud so you just need to be careful around those just use a bit of the AK landing gear wash just to add a little bit more grime even though the aircraft that I'm building here it was a display aircraft and was generally pretty clean on the outside the uh, undercarriage still shows plenty of dirt and grime on them Okay, that's as much as I can do for the moment. What I need to do now is fit some decals to the undercarriage legs. Once they've dried, I can give the whole assembly a coat of semi-gloss. Okay, so I'll leave those to dry now, and uh, once they are, can get these satin coated 
I'll be using some Tamiya lacquer semi-gloss. Then we'll do the uh, final detail painting. I just want to pick out the brake lines and the other hydraulics. And one or two other details. Then we can start to do some assembly. Just picking out the brake lines now. It's a big advantage having these in 3D print. They would be quite complicated. It's not a straightforward single line arrangement on a tornado. And on most modern jets, I guess. But uh, the 3D print makes life a lot easier. The hoses on the leg were different materials, so we've got these black ones, which I guess are some form of rubber maybe, or something like that, or rubber coated. Then we've got the steel ones here, which go up the side of the leg. They're painted in the same grey colour as the rest of the leg. And then we've got some flexible metal hoses which wrap around the circumference here. So I'll pick those out in a steel colour in a moment. That's all the painting done. The last job before assembly is just to add some bare metal foil to the oleo here. So this is ultra bright chrome that I'm using for this. Okay, let's do some assembly. 
get all these undercarriage bay components together. But uh, before I can do that, I just want to show you the lower part of the fuselage. And I've treated this like I did the front section of the fuselage because the panel lines on the artillery kit are far too deep. So uh, this is how we go about sorting that out if you didn't see it last time in part two. Okay, let's get the bays done now. So I've already put the starboard one in and as you can see, I've reinforced the connection with some styrene strip blocks here all the way around. So that uh, gives a glue surface onto the bottom plate and onto the bulkheads at the front and the sides here. And the model is going to be quite a weight when it's finished, so that's just a bit of a precaution really to make sure that the bay doesn't come loose under the weight. So we'll get this other one in now. It's a fairly positive location. Just tack it with some extra thin CA. Then we'll just cut some strip out to provide the reinforcements. Okay, that's good and strong. The problem with this method of construction where you've got to put the 3D printed legs in, of course, is that you've got to mask it all off and you've got to protect all the delicate detail for the rest of the build. So we're just going to have to be really careful uh, around this bottom end. What I might do is build some sort of box frame just to protect these legs. Uh, until the rest of the airframes together. So with that all done and set up, what I want to do, as I said at the beginning of the video, is tape the fuselage together, including the nose, put the wheels on, and just check that the aircraft's going to sit in at least a level attitude, and possibly even a bit nose down. So uh, I'll just get the rest of the parts out, just tape them together and we'll see if that works.
Okay, so I think that's mission accomplished for this episode. Uh, as you can see from the photograph, we've got a very slightly nose down attitude, which is perfect for a tornado. It's just what I was hoping for. And actually that's quite an achievement for the design of this aftermarket undercarriage set. Uh, it would be easy to upset the geometry of the undercarriage with uh, doing all that work, but it's a perfect fit, goes in without any bother and gives us exactly the stance that we're looking for. I've got to put some flats on the tyres, but obviously I'll balance out the nose tyres with the main tyres to make sure we maintain that sit. And uh, the other thing that's apparent when you start to take together the model is how imposing it's going to be, especially with the fin attached and the nose. It's going to be quite a large aircraft in 32 scale. So uh, I'm going to leave it there for this one. That's uh, good progress. It's exactly where I want it to be for the end of uh, this part. And I'll press on next time. I think the next job is to get the intakes sorted out. They're going to need quite a lot of work from what I've seen. And I've also got to work out how we uh, get the engines in. I've got an aftermarket nozzle set, so obviously we're going to have to work out how all that's going to go together. But uh, considering the complexity, the relative complexity of the kit, it's going together really well. Those one or two little adjustments are worthwhile to get it just so. And uh, hopefully when we come to actually put the uh, airframe together, it's not going to give us any bother. So I'll leave it there for this one and uh, crack on with the next pieces of work on it. I'm also going to do a little bit more on the border Lancaster, which is also on the channel. I've got the starboard cockpit to do on that. Uh, so I'll alternate really between the Tornado and the Lancaster, two big models on the bench. So uh, I'll leave it there for now and hopefully you'll join me for the next episode. In the meantime, look after yourselves, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.